Hi everyone, Cliff here, and I have the most incredible robots in the world, the MyCobot Pi, and another one here, and I put eyes on them, look, they have eyes now. So I have these all ready to go, like I've shown you before, and I put the gripper, here's the gripper, onto this robot. It's a beautiful gripper, and I set it up and it works great. So I'm going to show you how to do it. So what we do is we have the robot here. We brought it all up with the servos all straight. Hit this red button and we turn this on here. We have a monitor, keyboard, and a mouse. And then I have this secret project here I'm working on. But I can't tell you about this thing. And then we have the robot hand, the Terminator robot hand. So Raspberry Pi is starting up. Then I have eyes on this robot. I put nice little two little eyes on the robot. We could, we're going to put a Cyclops eye on there, and then I have two there. But this robot now will bring this one up. And we just turn this one on too. Now we have two robots going. So this is just about ready started with Raspberry Pi. It's the new Raspberry Pi. We have Ross, the robot operating system. There are four big robot conferences coming right up. You have to check out. And NVIDIA GTC is March 21st to 24th, and it's NVIDIA. Now, here's the thing. NVIDIA has this metaverse. So they have their own metaverse. They have all the graphics cards, the GPUs, for all the gamers and everyone, for all machine learning and artificial intelligence. So NVIDIA... You want to go, so you want to go to the NVIDIA conference. Now, NVIDIA has their Omniverse, which is their metaverse. You can get into their Omniverse, and then all sorts of creators, digital creators, can collaborate on all their tools like Maya, Photoshop, Blender, Unreal Engine, and they can all collaborate on the same scene in the same project with the Pixar animation format USD. So you open up this Omniverse, this NVIDIA Omniverse, you have a 3D scene, then everyone in the world can come into your scene and you can all work together and collaborate in your own 3D scene. Then they have physics and fluid dynamics, it's incredible. But on the robot side, NVIDIA, you have to go to only Linux, Ubuntu. You can't do this on Windows or Mac. And so you would get NVIDIA Omniverse for Linux, like I have here, and then you can actually open up the Isaac Sim program. Now what this is, is you get a 3D simulation. You also get synthetic real data. So you get a warehouse environment, a photorealistic warehouse, like an Amazon warehouse. Then you have a number of robots you can put in that warehouse. You can simulate that and the robots and train the robots for safety purposes. Then you can transfer that learning and that training over the real robots. So it's a little bit of a complicated process. What we have to do is we're getting ROS, the robot operating system. What is good is it's all really set up, so it's only going to take a little while. What I have to do is I have this robot here, Elephant Robotics MyCobot Pi. There's a CAD 3D model of this robot. That 3D model, which is a digital twin of this robot, will open up in robot operate in the robot operating system ROS. And then from ROS, I have a 3D model of this robot. And then I can control the robot from this robot operating system, aside from the other RoboFlow and the MyBlockly and the Python that I'm using here. But once I get this in to Ross, the robot operating system, then you have a duplicate of this right here as a 3D model, and you can do anything with it, train it, re remotely operate it. It's just amazing. Add sensors to it. It's great. However, then the next step is to take that raw system with this robot and the 3D model, this and the raw system, and we're bringing it into the NVIDIA Metaverse and the Omniverse in Isaac Sim. So then I'm going to bring this robot into a synthetic world, a digital twin simulated, visualized digital twin real world in Isaac Sim. 
and the robot's going to be placed in there, like say in an Amazon warehouse, in a desktop office, anywhere I want that's a simulated photorealistic environment. And this robot is going to be in there on the computer. And then I can train this robot in a synthetic data environment, like a digital twin real world environment without hurting the robot, hurting someone, knocking the robot over. You can do it all digitally. Then you can transfer the learning back to the robot. So it's just amazing. That's the goal is to move the robot into Ross and I'll do that really quick. And then Isaac Sim. And then we're going to control the robot in Isaac Sim through Ross. And then we're going to train it to computer vision, machine learning, artificial intelligence, all this and that. So I wanted to explain all that to you. It's really great. So what I'm going to do now is we have the robot here. This robot, I'm using RoboFlow more. We have the newest version of RoboFlow and Ubuntu here. And this robot here is really new is the newest robot from Hong Kong. And so I'm using my Blockly and then I'm programming it in Python. And then I've already saved XML files, which are different robot tasks and actions that I've had the robot do a series of actions, save that as an XML file from the Python. Then I can just go back and load that at any time, like here. And so I have a whole My Blockly program, a whole Python program. And then I can just run the program right now, see? It's just amazing. I just love this robot. Right here, it's going down. It's going to pick something up. It's going to come up. Now, the only thing uh, you need to know about this gripper, and I'm going to just make this into a short video, is that when you get the gripper, you uh, use the pins to just plug the gripper into the end effector. And then there's three wires here that go into the side. We have the top, but it's going into the side here. And one's power, one's ground, and one's data to close and open the gripper. And then there's three ways to open the grip. There's three actions on the gripper. Open, closed, and then you can set the gripper at a certain uh, size. And you can set the gripper at a certain size. And then the last is to see, is the gripper online? Now, the one thing I did want to mention, because there really are no instructions to use these. All this is new technology out of China. So one thing I noticed was that when you start up the robot, if the clamp doesn't work, then I would unplug the clamp and I'd make sure the robot was turned on and then plug in the clamp because I had the robot off and I plugged the clamp in and then I turned the robot on and the clamp wasn't recognized. But then when I unplug the clamp and I plug the clamp back in, the clamp was recognized and works. I put some eyes on my robot.